Amazon FBA is not as hard as it may seem. And there's loads of complex videos out there on YouTube. Some span hours, some span over 30, 40 minutes trying to teach you how to use Amazon FBA, how to generate profit, how to do retail and online arbitrage. But in today's video, I'm going to show you the four steps that are required to make profit in retail arbitrage for Amazon FBA. So for those of you who don't know what Amazon FBA is, it is very simple. You are essentially getting an account to sell on Amazon. You can either sell your goods on Amazon and then ship the goods to whoever purchases them yourself, or you can send the goods into Amazon and let them take care of everything for you. Personally, I prefer Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, which is where you send all the goods into Amazon. But if you have a big storage facility and don't mind paying the transportation and shipping fees, you can get a little bit of a reduction on the fees on the Amazon side because you're taking some of that burden yourself. And that is FBM fulfilled by merchant. When it comes to actually doing either of them either of them sides of Amazon, you will need a product. Now you can either get a product through online arbitrage, which a step-by-step -step video is coming up next week on that. You can do retail arbitrage, which is exactly what this video is today. Or you can build your own product, source it through a wholesaler, sell it on Amazon and get the reviews up. Whichever method you go down is completely up to you and there will be a video on all three on the channel in the not too distant future. But as I said today, we are going through the four steps to make money on Amazon FBA through retail arbitrage. Step one is going to be quite long-winded if you haven't done this already, but you are going to need to set up an account. Now, to set up an account, you do need to have a business. You can very easily set up a business, especially if you go through Tide and get a business account with them. They will pay for the fees to, the fees to set up your business and take you through a guide on how you can set that business up. You could very easily have this all done within the next few hours, potentially even the next 20, 30 minutes if you're quick enough and know what to do. So go ahead, get that business set up and then come and make your Amazon FBA account. You just need to press the sign up button and follow the sign up process. There will be some different steps involved in the background where you may need to do an interview call with people from Amazon. It will just be very simple. It will just be to check your ID. You will need to provide information such as your driver's license or your passport number, just things so, people, so Amazon can verify who you are. But all that is only a one-off step and as soon as all that's done, you never need to worry about it again. But if you want to see a video on how to fully set up an Amazon FBA account, do let me know down in the comments and we'll get on that next. But step two is the one I'm sure you're all waiting for, which is to source a product. Now through retail arbitrage, it is quite simple. You want to go to as many shops as you can, look through the reduced aisles, look through the clearance, look through the Tesco club card prices, look through everything until you find a product. And that is exactly what I did today. Today I went to my local Sainsbury's, my local Asda and my local Tesco to try and find products. I won't lie, I only intended to go to Sainsbury's, but there was no product in that Sainsbury's that would make us a good enough profit. There was one that would make us a profit, but it was only around 60p. But you are gonna have a lot of smaller margins when it comes to retail and online arbitrage, just because the store will still be looking to make a profit on the item. So you're already going to then include the profit they want to generate with the profit you want to generate. And it is a bit long winded, but you will still so slowly start to see some profit. And we have got some products down here that I'm going to take you through step by step. But just so you can see what you need to do when you're at the shops, let me show you how we got on. So if we just take a look here, the first product we found was this Kenwood Blend X three and one blender white you can see it was in the clearance section of sainsbury's down from 57 to 37 pound five pence so when you're actually doing this you, there's loads of apps you can download and use that will tell you whether or not you'll get a profit how much profit you'll make what the sales rank is but i like to keep it simple and i just use the amazon seller central app on my phone scan the barcode and put in the sales price and then it gives you a nice quick easy bit of information and you can just quickly decipher that and decide if you want to buy the product. Now, I did want to have this video where I was recording myself looking around the shops and showing you all the products, but ultimately, I don't have a camera and I was using my phone to scan the items, so we're just going to have to deal with what we've got at the moment. As you can see here, this is the Amazon Seller app, and if we just come over, and you can see here, all I did was scan the barcode on the item, and then for this instance, you can see there wasn't the product on Amazon FBA. 
so we weren't able to see we'd make a profit on that, on that specific item now this is an item i did find in sainsbury's it was just a little charge bank that charges up to lots of foam battery i assume and you can see i was available to buy it for seven pound fifty it was going for a low price on amazon of 11 11 99 and you can see the different prices that are available there we would have made a 70 pence profit on this i don't think that's worthwhile but if you maybe have a big amount of capital to start off with you would be able to go and purchase all them in the shop and get them all sold because it may only be 69 or 70 pence their profit but if you buy all 15 that are on the shelf you're then looking at nearly 10 pounds profit so it may be a small amount of profit and but as soon as you get the bigger quantity it works out and gets you a nice chunk of profit there as well but just make sure you're buying the right product now you're going to see items like this on the app you can see this was the two charges power bank but you can see it requires approval now these are things you need to take notice of because when it says it requires approval that means one of two things you're either a going to hit request approval in the bottom right and just automatically get approved which is spot on you can then go buy the product and get it listed or it's going to come up asking you to provide an invoice which will mean you need either written permission or an email saying you've got permission from the brand to sell their items which is normally quite hard to source or you will need an invoice of 10 items of that brand from a wholesaler so if you've got a wholesaler somewhere or you're partnered with a wholesaler for a certain brand it can be quite easy to do but that is a completely different process the wholesale for the sake of this video and the sake of the future videos on this channel, we are keeping it simple. We are not going through wholesalers at the moment. We're not getting any special approval. We're quite simply just going to be selling the products we're allowed. If you watched my last video on my progress on Amazon FBA so far, every product on there, we did not need approval for. But still, as you can see on this video, all I did was request approval to sell that two charges power bank. And I literally pressed the request approval button. And then as you can see on the other side of that, we instantly got approved. Sometimes it is as easy as that. So if you do want to just try and request approval, go for it. If you get approved, you can buy the product and list it when you get home. It is completely up to you, but make sure you have the ability to list the products before you buy them. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with items sat around the house. And trust me, I've got a few of them. Now, I also found this JML product over in i think this one was in asda and you can see it doesn't have the greatest of sales rank there at 108,000, so i probably wouldn't have bought this anyway but it was just really cheap and as you can see it was available at the low price there of 17.95 i think it was something like five pound in store so i did request approval for this one as well but as you can see we do need to provide one of the following documents to get approval for that brand we needed either one purchase invoice for products from the manufacturer or distributor or we needed a letter from JML authorizing them to sell our products. So it wasn't possible for us to get that product. It was only going to be a small profit. Well, to be honest, it was going to be, it was going to be a decent profit margin for that product, but it was a low sales rank. So we might, or a high sales rank, I should say. So we probably wouldn't have seen that profit, at least not in the near future. Now, the first decent product I found was an air fryer in Tesco. As you can see, it was going for a low price of $69.99, but it's key you go and actually look at the offers that are there. Because as you can see, the uh, the cheapest Prime offer that was there was $99.99. And the Prime offers, I don't know about you, but I'm nine times out of ten going for a Prime offer, even if it's more expensive. So I changed the low sale price here in the to $89.99, because that would still be £10 cheaper than the other Prime one, and that would probably get sold. It was £64 in store, so that would leave you with £5 21 pence profit now there was about six of these on the shelf so if you had the capital to go do that you could buy all six of them and then get 30 pounds profit when all was sold it was a really good sales rank as well for that category but for me i don't have the biggest budget in the world i couldn't just go snap all these up and i could not allow 65 pounds of my budget to go out on one product and to have to sit and wait for that product to be sold to then be able to reinvest the funds so this wasn't the product I ended up purchasing. Purely because I don't have the biggest of budgets, if I had the money available, I would have bought all them and sent them into Amazon. And this one, as you could see from the start, it didn't require approval to sell either. So this one would have been nice just to be able to buy, quickly list up and sell in the next few weeks and months. But also something that you keep in mind and consider, the storage fees will be a lot higher for a bigger product 
and away to your product and also the transportation fees to send the item into Amazon would be higher as well. So if we come over here to the Amazon FBA site, you can see we've got five pending information submissions now. And that's just because I was pressing request today while I was out in the shop. You can see we've got three there loaded today. We've got the JML one, Disney, Nerf. These are all ones I found products on, but didn't have the approval to sell in them categories. There was also some other products I found whilst walking around that did bring a profit, such as that air fryer, but I didn't have the capital to invest. But we did still find two products. Now I've only bought one of these products each. They are fairly small and the profit isn't great. But I wanted to be able to show you some products so I could show you the process of how you label the item and how you get it packaged and sent off to Amazon. And that is going to be coming in step two. But just to let you know why I only bought these two small packages instead of buying all them air fries for instance is because of the one main difference between retail and online arbitrage. And the main difference with that is you need to package the goods yourself. You might think you need to do that as well with online arbitrage, but the key aspect is when you're doing online arbitrage and getting the items bought online and shipped to your house, they're coming in a box. So when you need to send them items back to Amazon, it is significantly easier. You just need to open the box, take the products out, stick the new labels on, put them back in the box that you know they all fit into, tape it back up, stick the new label on over the old labels and send it off to Amazon. When it comes to buying products outside and in retail arbitrage, such as we've done today, you do need to find your own boxes, package them all yourself, make sure everything fits, make sure there's no loose, make sure there's no room in the box so that the product can't just move around in transport and potentially get damaged. There is all them other things you need to consider with retail arbitrage. But the one key thing is when you normally do online arbitrage and get the boxes, there is normally a little bit of space in there. So when we come to do the next video, which you'll see next week, a step-by-step -step on online arbitrage, these products will be trying to get squished into them boxes as well, so we can make the most of some boxes without needing to buy any ourselves. But as I said, step two was finding the products, so let me show you the products we got. So the first product we found was this Pokemon Clip and Go Pokeball Pikachu and Premier Ball. Now, this one wasn't even on offer. Tesco, it was just full price at Tesco, £10. Now, I just decided to scan this and have a little go. And as you can see over on Amazon, it's going for 18 32 or the typical price down at the bottom of 18 99 You can see there's only actually one left in stock on this item. And then after that one has been sold, the next available prime price is 18 85 18 90 19 99 So I'm going to guess this is going to sell for around about 18 99 which as you can see is close to the typical price. So if we come up with the revenue calculator, in fact we'll put 1890 just because that seems to be the typical price for the item. You put in the cost of goods, which was £10 for us. You can see that if this sells for that 1890, we're going to be looking at £2.74 pence profit, which is a profit margin of around 15%. So it's not a huge amount of profit, but it's decent considering the item wasn't even on offer. So we've just got that nice small little item that we will get labelled up in just a second. Now you can also see the sales rank over here is at 19,178. It's not huge and it's only got one rating, but it got a five star rating, which is handy. The sales rank isn't incredible, but it's under 100,000, which is what I normally aim for. Today, I just wasn't being as picky because there wasn't as many items about. When it comes to doing retail arbitrage, you really need to set a day aside and pretty much go around every shop you can find. Some weekends you will fill your car. Other weekends you might come back with only one or two individual products. It really is just look at the drawer on what's on offer that week and what products you find. Trust me, if you go out one weekend and don't find a single product, do not be disheartened. I did spend a solid four hours out there today looking for products and I only found these two. There was a few more, such as the air fryers and a few that I didn't have approval for, but for ones I could actually sell on my budget, these were the only two I found. Now, with this Pokemon item here, there was about 30 of them on the shelf. So, if I wanted to, I could have gone and bought all 30 of them, and then if they were to sell, which they all 30 wouldn't have sold anytime soon with that sales rank, but if all 30 were to sell, you can see what profit there would be there. And in fact, let's change the estimated sales to the 30, and you can see that would then be 84, 82 pounds worth of profit. So it would be nice profit, and we are getting a decent little return here. 
but don't be disheartened when you're doing either retail or online arbitrage if you don't find a product. Just be patient and stick with your plan because you will find products in the end. Now the next item we've got is this weird Fortnite burger van thing that I found. It was on a club card offer price down from £25 to £10. And as you can see on Amazon, it's actually going for that £25. So we are literally here just taking that offer and selling it back for the original price. So if we look over here, you can see £25 is the item sale price. We bought it for 15 You can see it's going to be another around about £2.46 profit. Not as big of a net margin there on the profit, but it's still profit at the end of the day. You can see the sales rank is 36,000 in toys and games, which is a very good sales rank. You can also see it's got 41 ratings there as well. So this is another product we'll be able to list and get sold on. So out of them two products there, we're not actually going to be looking at a huge return, but we are going to be looking at some profit. We invested £25 into the products, and we're going to be looking at around about a £5.20 profit when they both sell, if they sell at the current prices. So that is just a nice little return there. And that means next time when we go to do our retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, instead of having £25 to play with, we now have 30 So you can see how you can just build on your amounts there. But let's get into step three, which is listing and labelling the products. So once you've got the products, as you can see over here, we've got the products, we've got the ASINs of both the products available here. If you don't know the ASINs, just look them up on Amazon, search for the product, scroll down at the bottom, and then you can see the ASIN down here at the bottom. We're going to come over to Amazon Seller Central. We're going to go to the three lines in the top left, and then we're going to go to Catalog and Add Products. Now, don't be disheartened when you see here I've had zero orders, zero buyer messages, and only got a balance of £5.37. I have had sales on Amazon. It is just, as you guys can clearly tell by this video, I don't have a big budget. So nine times out of ten, I am in a waiting period with Amazon. I'm either waiting for my money to come back from my sales, or I'm waiting for them to process my next lot of orders. As you guys can tell, I've got two items here ready to go in. These are my next two items. The next video next week, as I said, will be on online arbitrage. That will be my next shipment of products going in as well. And then I'll be waiting for them to get sold to then reinvest that money. I'm not made of money, and this is fully run on a budget. So hopefully you guys understand that. But once you've come to your ad product page, you then just need to type in the ASIN of the product. So let's grab the ASIN of the Porgy Ball over here, get that put over there, and we're going to say that this is a new product, which it is, and then we're going to sell the product. So we're quite simply going to press sell product, and then it's going to take us to the next step. The next step here is we're just going to put in the quantity, and then we're going to put in our price. So as you can see here, we're going to go for the £18.90. pence. So I'm just going to put that in. It is a new product and we will use fulfilled by Amazon in this instance. You can mess around with the prices for the countries and everything along that lines, but I'm just going to stick with that, with it just being the UK. And then we're going to go to save and finish. Now, because we're going to be doing two separate products here, I'm just going to press list as FBA, and then we're going to send off the product in a few moments. We're going to create a shipment for both these items together. So if you did just have the one product, you can just carry on and wait to the next step. But I'm just going to add the second product to the list. So we're going to go back again, catalog, add products. We're going to grab the ASIN of our Fortnite burger truck. And we're going to put this in over here and press search. Now you can see it's popped up with new and then we have to apply to sell. So I'm just going to hit apply to sell, hit request approval. And as you can see, we've been approved for the sale there. Now I know this because... I already requested approval when I was in the store, so I'm okay with that. So let's just come back here again, paste the product in, change this to new, and then press sell the product. So sometimes it will ask you to reaffirm yourself again. Don't worry about that. It is all okay. But just always make sure, as you saw with the steps earlier on, that you have approval to sell the product before you purchase it. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with some left around the house. So now we're just going to put in the price for this one again which is going to be £25. I'm actually going to put £24.99, just so it's the lowest available there, and because it really does make a difference. It'll only be one penny off my profit, but that makes it look 100 times more appealing, just the psychology behind the numbers, for some unknown reason. We're going to get Amazon to ship the product. Everything's the same with the prices down here, and we're going to save and finish there. 
We're then going to list as FBA over in the corner. And then what we need to wait to do over here is come over to inventory and manage all inventory. And then we just need to wait for both these products to show up. So as you can see, the Pokemon Clip and Go Pokeball has arrived there in our inventory. But we just need to wait for the other one to populate. Sometimes it can take about five minutes before it shows up. So let's just wait for both of them to be there. And then we'll create a shipment. So now as you can see, a couple of minutes later, we now have both the items there listed as inactive out of stock so then all you're going to do is select the two products over on the left hand side go to the action tab up here and send slash replenish inventory so it's just double checking this is what we want to do and yes it is what we want to do so now it's ready to ship now you can see here that do we still need to label the items over here with our own labels sometimes you'll get lucky and amazon will be happy just to have the same barcode on the bottom so what's already on the product but I'd say about eight times out of 10, you're gonna to have to label the product with a new label, which is fine. All you need is the labels to have, get A4 sheet full of all the labels and get them printed off. It is really simple. You don't need a special printer or anything. Just use your own one at home and I'll show you how we print these off in just a second. So all we're gonna do is click on the prep and labeling. We're gonna come over here. There is no prep needed. That is absolutely fine. As you can see over here, sometimes you can use the manufacturer's barcode Nine times eight or nine times out of ten, though it's not going to work. But we'll just go there and press save on that one. Now you can label them yourself, which is what I'm going to do, or you can pay the 25p per unit fee to get Amazon to do it for you. But then it will take a bit longer in the processing phase. So I went through that process there, and now we've got the print SKU labels available. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the fact that we're just getting one unit of both of these, and I'm going to say that both over here are ready to pack. And as you can see, there is now the option to print both the labels. And now you're just going to put in the amount of labels you need for each product. I just need one of each. I've got 24 labels per sheet with my labels. I'm then going to press print. It's going to give you the PDF. And as you can see, these are the two labels that are going to be there. I'm literally going to press print, get it sent down to the printer, and then go grab the labels. Now, as you can see, I was a bit of an idiot. I've already used up these labels on previous shipments and i thought if i turned it around i'd be able to print again and i turned it the wrong way so i ended up printing over nothing which was handy but don't worry if you ever make a mistake with mistake with the labels you can always just print out fresh ones again which is what i did went and turned the paper around and we've got the two new labels so i can see the top label is the Fortnite one so i'm literally just going to take that label off and then stick that label over the pre-existing barcode on the bottom. So I'm literally just going to cover that existing one and stick the label there. Now sometimes your labels might be dodgy and might not be clear to read. Sometimes with the paper, such as the paper that I've got, it leaves a line on the side, right on the edge. But do not worry, as long as you can see the number and the letters along the bottom of the barcode, that is fine. I've worked in Amazon before. If they cannot scan the label, there is a button they can press and they will just type that number in along the bottom. So it should still be all okay. Now we just need to label up the second of the two, which as we can see along the bottom is the Pokeball. I'll just get it as close as I can to show you that it does actually say on the label. I know you could see it on the PDF version, but let me just focus the camera up. And if my camera is not inverted, you can see it says Pokeball there as well. So let's just get that stuck on to the barcode over here. And there we go, that is both the barcodes applied. So then the next steps over here are we're gonna do pack individual units. Now, the next thing that's gonna happen once I press pack individual units is it's going to put these into a box. It's going to tell me if I need to, if I can put them both in the same box or if they need to be in separate boxes. And then it's quite simply just gonna give me some more labels to stick on the outside of the box to then ship off. It'll want the dimensions of the box and the weight of the box. You can guess with either, but it's better to go overestimation than underestimation. It's then gonna ask how you want to ship the goods. I personally always go with UPS just because they have a partnership with Amazon. And because the UPS center is right near my house, it's actually free for me just to go drop off the products. So that's the next step I'd do. Now the reason I'm not going to go ahead and press pack individual units and move on to the next step is because I'm going to be doing online arbitrage in the next few days and ordering some products to come to my house. When they come to my house, they'll come in boxes 
and then I'm quite sneakily just going to add these two items into them boxes into the shipping plan. So you'll see on the online arbitrage step by step video next week, you will see me add these two items in. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave these two items here on my dashboard until I get them online arbitrage parcels through to then hopefully include these in the box and send them off. But it really is that simple. As soon as you've got the labels on here, you've got the next step where you'll just put in the dimensions of the box, print off the labels for the box and put them on. And then it is just a case of going through a very simple step-by-step -step procedure of choosing your delivery company. If you want them to pick it up from your house or if you're happy to drop them off, it will tell you where you can drop them off. It will tell you the costs of the delivery. It will tell you absolutely everything. So the rest of the process is really simple. And as soon as you've literally clicked the next two buttons in the stages, it will be a case of just waiting for Amazon to receive the goods. Once they've received the goods, the items will show up as these two items have on my dashboard where you can then edit the price. You can check if you're the featured offer, if you're the lowest price. You can check absolutely everything. So don't worry, it's not a vital step. And if you're really desperate to watch me label up the big boxes, come back next week and watch the step-by-step -step online arbitrage video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any of the videos you want to see surrounding Amazon FBA. There is plenty I've already got in the pipeline, but if you all give me some recommendations, I'll put them to the top of my list. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Go get hunting on some retail arbitrage deals yourself and hopefully make some profit. And I'll see you next time.